Today we're going over the Gap episode part two. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. Find us on Twitter at Flurn. We're also on Facebook at Flurn as well. Today we're doing a two part episodes, part two, and we're gonna be bringing everything together. We're basically working a little bit more on our subjects, how they're interacting with each other. We're gonna add some style and uh, turn it into an ad. It's gonna be really, really cool. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, first things first, let's just zoom in and see how all of our subjects are interacting with each other. So we did a relatively rough job earlier, but I think we could just do a little bit of a better job. So what I'm gonna do, I want this hand to kinda come in front of this other version of Berkeley. So I'm gonna shift click on this layer mask and then I'm gonna hit W again. Let's just bring our tolerance down. Yep, something like that. Let's just select this area out again. And we can select out the background. If I want her hand eventually selected, we all, all we have to do is invert the selection. So it's not that hard. Let's shift click on the selection again, and then select, we're gonna inverse. So shift command I will inverse our selection. And then I'm gonna paint white on the layer mask and that should paint back Berkeley's hand right in front of the other version of Berkeley, which is really, really cool. All right, and then we'll just go in here and paint this back white right up until then. And with hair, oftentimes you can just kind of like create a small soft brush and just kind of blend this together. That would be my suggestion. It's gonna most of the time come out the best. All right, so we have pretty much all the interaction we want. Let's just make sure we're not uh, cutting off any hands or feet or anything. It's relatively important in the growth and development of a young child. All right, <laughs> we're good to go there. Next, let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna close this out. So that's all of our Berkeleys. Next, we're gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna go ahead and group this. We'll just call this uh, retouch. All right, so we're gonna do just a, a relatively brief job here. This is nothing, nothing crazy. Um, you could go in here and if this were a real gap ad, I would spend a lot more time. Obviously, this is a very quick, free online Photoshop tutorial. If you guys ever wanna learn a lot more in depth, check out our pro tutorials. They are way more in depth than what we do in the free ones. All right, so here with it, I'm just going in and using my healing brush tool. So I'm hitting J to sample an area and then just painting right over an area. This is, you know, let's say your seamless gets dirty or things like that, it, it happens. I mean, that's what, it's, that's what it's for. It's dirty and then you can tear it off. So I'm just sampling areas and then I'm, you know, like that blue tape we used as a marker. So Berkeley knew where she was supposed to be standing. There we go. So we're just kind of cleaning this off. So you want to sample your clean area and then paint over the area that needs to be covered up. And you can cover up little tape, things like that. This is the same tool you would be using to cover up pimples if you were retouching skin. Healing brush tool is awesome. There we go, and we'll sample those areas and paint. So we're just looking to make a relatively clean backdrop. It doesn't have to be perfect. If this were, I have a feeling if this were a real gap ad, they would want it to be dang near perfect. But um, for this sort of thing, I, I don't think it needs to be perfect. A little bit of texture in there, never hurt anyone. All right, there we go, that looks pretty good. So if you wanted to go through after that, let's just look at the before and the after with that. So. That didn't take too long, but it's nice to just kind of clean some things up. Next, I'm gonna go through and we're just actually gonna use our brush tool. I'm gonna paint with a soft edge brush here and just go in and kind of grab some of these colors from our shadows. There we go, on a new layer. There we go. And kind of just paint that in there. Let's grab a darker color. You can use, when you're actually sampling, you can sample a point sample or an 11 by 11 average or whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna just go ahead and sample the point so I know exactly what color I'm picking. There we go. And then we can kinda of just paint in our own shadows here. Just get creative with it. It really doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just, I just didn't want it to cut off right there. All right, and learning how to sample color and then painting new colors in, that's gonna really be a skill that you'll use quite a bit when you're retouching. Okay, so just you know a couple little things just to get us all cleaned up and uh, ready to go. And then from there, if you wanted to, um, let's say we wanted to kind of like refine our backdrop a little bit more. This isn't the best technique um, as far as, if you wanted to print something out, I wouldn't recommend just grabbing the brush tool and then painting over an area. I do this quite a bit with images that are just going on the web because it's just not a big deal. You won't lose a whole lot of definition. 
Um, but if you're going to be printing, you generally don't want to just grab, you know, grab a color and start painting with a brush tool because the brush tool in Photoshop has a lot less definition than actual pixels. So I would recommend using the clone stamp tool if you did plan on actually printing. But if not, the brush tool is totally fine. All right, there we go. So it's just good to know, like there's always, you know, the way that takes two minutes but is not good for printing, and then the way that makes that takes 30 minutes and is good for printing. Generally, I stick with the two minute version if I'm not printing, because um, time is precious. We don't have a ton of it. All right, there we go. Just to kind of like clean everything up and make it nice and seamless like that. Cool. Now what we're gonna do is let's go ahead, so there's our retouch group. Let's go ahead and make a new layer, group this and double click this and call this color. So we're going to play around with our color a little bit. And I just want to, on this layer, we're going to go to select and down here to, all right, select and down here to color range. All right, let's just grab a curves adjustment layer real quick first. It's not letting me grab select color range. So we're going to hit curves adjustment layer and I want to kind of color this background in a way that's going to actually allow, um, I want it to look a little bit like more like an add. I don't want the background to be gray. I want it to be a little bit more of a shade of blue. So I'm gonna pull up my blue color here and then let's go to our green channel and pull up our green channel just to cool things off a little bit. Okay, that looks great. Now, when you cool things off like that, it's gonna look really good. Just keep in mind, it's gonna affect everything, including like skin tone. And um, if you don't want your subjects to be too, um, too cool, you just wanna make sure you paint black over like their faces and things like that on the layer mask. And that's just going to make sure that their their skin tone actually stays like you know how it how it should look. All right, you can use things like select color range um, for this sort of thing as well. But I find for the most part you're fine just painting like this. Um, it doesn't actually have to be perfect. You just want to bring some more some of the original color uh, back into your subjects. There we go. All right, and we're almost done. And then I'm gonna come in here with a large black brush and just paint white on there just a little bit to bring some of this original cool. Because people's skin does reflect their background that they're in, so it, you still do want it to be a little bit cool. So we've got about a 50% layer mask on there. So it, she's just a mix between the original warm and, uh, and cool that we had. All right, and that looks really great. So on a new layer, let's go to select, and then for some reason it's not allowing me to go to select color range, and I have no idea why. Oh, I've got my quick mask turned on. That would explain it. Hit Q to turn off your quick mask if you're in quick, mo quick mask mode. How did I know that? Because it said right there, um, edit in quick mask mode, and that was checked, which that very rarely happens, but apparently it did happen this time. Okay, on a new layer, I'm gonna go up to select and now we'll go down to color range and I'm gonna choose this kind of like this nice blue color that's in our subject's clothes. There we go. So we're gonna select that color range and then here I'm gonna create a new curves adjustment layer and I'm gonna take this blue channel and just drag this even farther up so we get like that really nice blue. Let's add a little bit of, maybe it's a little bit of red in there too. All right, and a little bit of green, I think is gonna give it that nice natural, like blue jean color. We want it to be, uh, we just want it to be bright. Um, there we go, we can lower our opacity a little bit. Mostly because this is, it's just the type of ad that you kind of want to be bright and happy and fun. So that's why we're doing it. All right, that looks pretty good. And um, I, I like what we've got going on there. So you can see the color really does add quite a bit to the ad. And it wasn't really that hard to do, which is great. All right, the next thing we've got, we got a Gap logo, and um, I just grabbed this from the internet. So <laughs> we're gonna put this in here. I'm gonna hit Command T and uh, scale it a little bit. I thought it might be kind of cool to have it be, you, you could always put it on the bottom left there, but I kind of thought it would be cool because we have this area of like, um, you know, she's kind of like kicking her leg up there. It kind of has, like it fits to me. Um, let's bring our crop tool in. I'm just gonna crop this in just a little bit more from the left there. All right, and let's give it a little bit of space here on the bottom. There we go. This is something that I'm imagining like a, a billboard or something like, not that I think that this would actually be a billboard image, but something not too far from it could be a billboard image with 
maybe four more hours of retouching. All right, this gap, uh, we're gonna double click there and what I'm gonna do is turn on our drop shadow because I kind of want it to look like it's got a shadow just like all these other layers do. So here in our drop shadow, um, you can change your distance, you can change your size, uh, and you can change, let's just bring our distance up a little bit more. There we go, and change our opacity. So I'm not like trying to create this huge drop shadow. Let's just see before and after. Um, you know, nothing like, whoa, there's a drop shadow in there. The more subtle, the better usually with this sort of thing. Uh, but in this case, I think that totally does. Um, I think it totally works for us. All right, let's see what else we can do with the color now that we have that in there. Uh, let's just go to our curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to go to my blue channel and we'll just try really pumping, pumping those blues up just a little bit and just put a tiny bit of green in there as well. There we go. So that looks pretty good. And if you want to use a gradient, you can do that too. So I'm going to hit command I on this. I'm going to hit G for my gradient tool. And then I'm going to go from the left to the right there with a the gradient. So it's going to be like more blue on the right. Let's bring that in a little bit farther. Um, which I think is just kind of cool. Gives it a little bit more like that gap-esque uh, feel to it. All right, and that looks good. And then the very last thing I'm gonna do, just because the only reason I'm doing this, guys, is because we have that's like pure white here in the gap. So I'm gonna take white and I'm gonna paint it right over top of our subject, just like this. All right. Basically what I'm doing is I'm kind of matching colors and it's gonna make everything look like it's kind of coming together. So you, that's exactly how messy I'm gonna be. You don't need to be cleaner than that sometimes. Um, we're gonna double click right over here and I just want this to only show up on the highlights. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, click for my underlying layer. We're just gonna go left or the right on this and I don't even know if it's gonna look good. I'm just trying it, so we'll see. Um, baby, basically my goal is just to bring a tiny bit of white highlight into her skin there we go, let's bring our opacity down just a little bit. And it's just this little bit of white. Let's see where it's going. Zoom in there, you can see it here on the faces of our subject. Just that little bit of white there, we can lower the opacity a little bit. Um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna kinda add some contrast to the faces, which is really nice. And it also reflects the color that's in the ad right over here. So it kinda it serves two purposes in this case. All right, and then on the left side, maybe we'll make it a little bit darker and add some of that blue. So we'll go to a curves adjustment layer and make this a little bit darker, and then we'll just add that blue. Kind of make want to make it look like that. Let's take our red channel and just drag this down a little bit so we get more of the more of the gap blue. All right, we we'll hit Command I and then use our gradient tool. And this time, I'm going to go from the left to the right. There we go, and. That effect is way too strong. So I'm gonna lower my opacity of the layer mask quite a bit and uh, there we go, looking a little bit better. All right, this looks really, really cool. All right, I think the last thing we're gonna do here is I just wanna make sure the original uh, face color comes through a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna to go to select down to color range and we're just gonna choose the faces of our subject. Let's just choose this here. All right, and let's grab a curves adjustment layer now and just try like bringing this down just a little bit and then adding back some red to her face and I will go to my blue channel and pull that down to add some yellow to it. All right, just to make sure it's along her original skin tone because again, we wanna make sure we get the skin tones um, pretty close. They were just looking a little bit too light. All right, and there we go. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I, I really like this image. I think it came out great and it didn't take too long to get it. So this was uh, with everything combined and then we did some just a bit of retouching. We did some color work and then here, of course, we've got our gap ad and uh, we're ready to go. And that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you had fun hanging out with me today, watching me do some Photoshop and just hang out and be my friend and watch me do Photoshop all day. Hmm. I'll flirt you later. Hi guys, Kat from Flirn here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flirn.com. Also check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, and lighting. 
a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome.